Hi, this is Shadi. Today I have a very exciting video for you. But before uh, we dive in, I'd just like to say that the French translation of the origins and history of judo will be out hopefully by next week. So please stay tuned. So we all know that judo has had a lot of influence on many martial arts, sambo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, MMA, etc. But there was always uh, a lot of uh, debates in the past, it was if the Chinese were the ones that contributed the foundation of jiu-jitsu to Japan. Recent decades, we have been discussing the groundwork and ground aspect of judo, whether it's uh, only Brazilian or the ingenuity of the Japanese. And of course, recently, it's what do you do without a jacket? And of course, the answer is very clear. So today, I'm going to be looking at Fion versus McKinsey. And also, I'm going to be looking at Cade versus Andrew. So it's very exciting. So the first I'd like to look at is some classical elements of groundwork of judo. The first one being the concept of around the world. So the, as the name suggests, you're spinning around. And here you see Fion, who I believe is a judo black belt as well, is rotating and taking whatever McKenzie is giving to her in order to hover and maintain control and keeping the top position and this is like i said what is called the around the world and here she frees her leg and tries to keep uh, going she did a very good job at maintaining full control throughout the fight so here you see it is a switch between pins uh, it all depends on what your opponent is giving you and you keep top position you can also say that uh, you are hovering like an uki gatame, as Dr. Ferguson calls it. Um, also, you can see it in the Kimura versus Gracie fight, how they were moving around while Kimura was hovering over Gracie the entire time to maintain control. Uh, by the way, I got the idea of this video to cover it from X a Martial Art. I don't know if you are familiar with them, but they have worked with a lot of high-level athletes, competitors, and they have a large range of rash guards for both men and women. They range from the minimalist, the black, as you can see, I like this uh, a lot, to the very colorful and detailed. So um, you have a very wide range to check from. They're also high quality and very affordable. And if you are an active competitor, I suggest you reach out to them on Instagram if you wish to be uh, an affiliate. So please don't forget to check out the links in the description below. Another cool thing that Fionn did was the swift uh, pass. She's very good at uh, knee cuts and also the Tore Yando. And here you see, just goes to the side and shifts the weight and also uh, confuses the opponent. So these are classical uh, groundwork of judo developed by the legendary Oda Tsunetane. So you either pass through uh, to the side or knee cut, which both were displayed by Fion. And finally here, the massive ending, as you can see this spinning Koshi Guruma or the hip wheel catching McKenzie completely by surprise again classical elements of judo you hold the arm and you cut down the head uh, wheeling them over your hips and it is a very effective uh, throw of course you don't really need the jacket uh, to do it there's no grips or variations where you have to grip and uh, it is absolutely devastating not only that but she grabbed her completely rotating her around in order to catch her uh, on the uh, with the hip contact and ro wheeling her over the hips so here you see the kata version of uchimata relies on this very same principle but she got what we call a pinch headlock in order to rotate her on to her hips and finally finishing everything off with a beautiful sankaku gatame or a triangle hold from the back here you see she gets it and locks the arm immediately gets the submission a wonderful match and uh, again more classical elements of judo katame waza so 
We need to understand something about triangles. Triangle is a position rather than a submission. You can get literally everything from the triangle. You can get a strangle, you can get a variety of arm locks, which uh, this Kodokan footage shows perfectly, and also you can get uh, a pin. So it looks like a triangle choke, but you end up locking the arm. Uh, you can use it as a troubleshoot for a failed uh, strangle. Here you see very similar to what Fion did off the back or off the turtle gets it and then got the triangle locking the arm. You can keep the arm bent and then uh, push it to the side which will also be very brutal. You can catch it from any direction. It's a very versatile position. You can get the other arm that is free that's not in the triangle that, to lock it. You can also um, tie it with the belt of course if you're working with the gi but here you can see the variety of the choices that you have just by locking a triangle here you lock it with the belt and then proceed to push the wrist which will hurt the shoulder quite a bit so this entry from the side it's called yoko sankaku and um, you can get also wrist locks from the triangle you can also get a pin as well so here, this uh, particular variation really stood out to me. Uh, you can either lock the shoulder or here you can push on the wrist, which will become either a shoulder lock or uh, a wrist lock. So it's a very versatile position uh, that should be invested in. Uh, and I'm glad to see it here in this uh, great high level uh, jujitsu competition. Next is the Cade and Andrew fight. His Uchimata is absolutely gorgeous. So he does quite a few actually, but he does it from the overhook, pulling him through and then reaping the thigh. He does it quite a few times. So uh, as Justin Flores said, the overhook Uchimata is now the new single leg and I tend to uh, agree. So you can get the Uchimata uh, without the Gi in two ways the first one being the underhook in case you cannot get the overhook but uh, you really have to roll out your shoulder above uh, i'm sorry your elbow to the top which will get them to move forward and unbalance them and of course you can pinch uh, their shoulder uh, downwards if you have the overhook and then proceed to reap the thigh it's far easier to do it this way with the lapel because the lapel and the jacket provide a lot of slack and it gets a bit difficult to unbalance. And here, not only Kate has a beautiful Uchimata, but also counters Andrew's uh, Uchimata by riding it. And again, these are some of the things that you see in also high level judo as well. Here you see uh, Maruyama Joshiro uh, riding the Russians uh, Uchimata going on top and actually scoring uh, and also Andrew at one point evades uh, Cade's Uchimata so Uchimata Tsukashi Tsukashi comes from the word Tsukasu so to see through so kind of letting it pass through in a sense so you have two variations the first one here you see letting it hit empty air and the second one is uh, if it stays between your thigh you ride it by steering the hand control yourself so uh, as you can see it was a very uh, exciting event i'm very happy to see classical elements of judo not only on the ground but also standing up and uh, to say that it doesn't work uh, without the gi and without the jacket uh, it's just blatantly false also all the historical uh, claims against judo and uh, the authenticity and the ingenuity is also false so please don't forget to check out my book uh, below and also x uh, martial art in the description below this was shady and thank you for listening